For those who know what's right. For those wedded to the machines in their bedrooms, their studios, their best friend's garage or basement. For those who negotiate with the system every day to make time for the music that matters. For those who get in debt to fund the fight against the mundane. For those who stay true to their cause even in the face of income and fame through compromise. For those who feel the power of every beat. For those who keep their minds open. For those who encourage and support those pursuing their personal dream. For those who sacrifice relationships to make sure the music is heard. For those for which the music is a lifetime, not a pastime. This is Base Agenda. 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 This is Steve Allman, and you're listening to Base Agenda. Base Agenda episode 243. This month, a real UK flavour to the show. We've got two guests for you. First up in part one, Steve Allman, producer of some top quality dance floor focused electro, long term resident at Scanned, recently had a great track on a co accused compilation, mostly released on Cultivated Electronics, but also on other labels like uh, Eon and Avoidant 2. And in part two of the show, we've got Skyborg from Borg Recordings bringing you a mix showcasing recent and forthcoming releases on the label first up gonna get tuned into the vibes of steve allman listen to a couple of his tracks and then hear his story enjoy
music publishing oh cool oh okay so you you were working in the in the business then. that's good yeah no, i used to work for prs which is like ah. you heard of prs yeah 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 so i used to do the membership stuff there and then i went to sony and then now i'm at a place called ditto which is okay. like it's like a digital distributor right. and um you know so you can sort of be an artist and you pay the money for the fee and then you get your music up onto spotify and you know all the digital services got you um, okay but then they set up a publishing arm, and then that's what I sort of went to help do. But it's better that big things drill. That's what our big music is, it's drill. So is I'm it? sort of, oh. yeah, I'm, be- I'm very out of it, you know, with the music that's like flowing through. Because yeah. a lot of them artists, they want to be in control of, you know, that they sort yeah. of look to people like Jay Z and, you know, like, you know, the sort of entrepreneurial thing where they don't yeah, want to yeah. tie themselves down to majors or, right. you know, or, or some of the majors won't touch them because they're a bit, you know, rough around the edges yeah yeah definitely yeah yeah. and um so they come to someone like ditto because you know we'll give them a contract and they can walk away with it within 30 days or 60 days it's not like they're tied down for like you know right so when did you first get into it were you were you into it kind of like from like from as a kid or a bit later on or yeah like i'm I'm 44 now and um yeah when 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 i was like a teenager i had a big sister who was like six years older than me and she right. was the one who got me into it all you know it was like the i remember it was at the advent city limits oh, you know man. i remember hearing that she did me a tape and that was on it and i was like whoa yeah what's that and just it just seemed so different you know the sort of the beat pattern just seemed like you know 
I think that was one of the earliest ones things I heard as well actually because yeah. I wasn't I wasn't like 80s electro old school that I, I didn't really didn't really kind of register with me it was more like yeah, that kind of era and like Dave Clark, Electro well, it, I mean, mixes. exactly, yeah. I think most people, like, you know, in their 40s will, will be citing Dave Clark, Electro Boogie as the they one, do. isn't it? Yeah. Both of them um, oh. compilations were like, yeah, when they came out. I remember just rinsing the tape with that. It would just stay in yeah. my Walkman. You know, yeah, just yeah. go around on a loop, like, for months. That's it. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. remember, like, when, e- when eBay, you know, was, like, quite a new thing. And that was yeah. one of the first things I bought, and that, that this was back then, and I think I spent like forty quid on it then, you know, which was a lot of money. It was like paying eighty quid or something for a record. Gee, yeah, I was going to say you could probably double that now, couldn't you? Yeah, but yeah, wow. yeah, wow. all of that stuff. But yeah, it was, it was maintaining that and just going to like um, lost parties and stuff. And oh, yeah, it, yeah. it would be all like um, you know, people from underground resistance and things like that. Mm. And it was Bravo and all, you know, just that that sort of late nineties thing. It all just yeah. sort of. I mean, oh, is that the second wave? I always think of it as the second wave because and people are like, well, it never went away, and which it, it hasn't. You know, we all know that. But as in, when you know, like the, I know, think of it as a set because to me that was like the second wave came back with a little bit more of a sort of techno edge to it. You know, it was less hip hoppy. It was more techno kind of. Yeah, exactly. Especially where the advent. That's where. Well, exactly. Yeah, that's it. it. So that I think that's that's how I kind of separate the two in my in my brain. <laughs> Let's talk about the tracks you've made. I was trying to think what my favourites are out of this, and it changes every day, I think. But I do like, I do keep coming back to Brainwave. Is is definitely one of my really feel that one, man. Yeah, why why that one for you? Yeah, no, yeah, I I, I remember being you know proud of that one. When you hear it back, you're like, yeah, this sounds proper. Like, yeah, this sounds all right. (laughs) And I I met um, Adam Shelton, who runs Eon Records. Sort of met him through Phil, and. um, yeah, and you know, just chatting, and, and he was just like, you know, send me some tracks. You know, I'd be interested to hear. Mm. And I sent, I sent him, you know, that EP. Yeah, and you know, I, th- I think I sent him three tracks, and there was one he wasn't sure of, and then I could come back with another one. Right. And that, and um, mm. yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was just nice to have someone be like, oh yeah, I'll put that out. Because I think I'd had a couple of um, tracks on like you know on cultivated like on a compilation but that was the first one was like all right this would be a steve yeah. Allman ep yeah yeah so that was a wholesale yeah as you say your 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 name on it yeah yeah so when was your first release i'm just trying to think how long you've been doing this thing so that was i, I had a track on um uh, a, a cultivated electronics ep evolution technology i think that, when was that i think that was probably about 10 years ago or something yeah right okay with a Oh, it was with uh, ERP was on the same EP, which is nice. Like, oh, I'm, I'm on the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah, that's not bad, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, ten about ten years. Yeah. That about makes ten sense. years. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I think I had yeah. Um, yeah, Evolution Technology, and then I did a track with Phil, which then went on another compilation. I think that was a ten years cultivated one. <laughs>
when you started making your own music, what were you what were you using to make tunes? Um, I, I remember the first thing I bought was an MPC 2000. Yeah. And um, I, I never really got my head around like the fact of like having to put all the samples in, and I never sort of had a computer at the time, so I could just sort of uh, upload a load of import a load of samples into it. Right. So it's like pretty uh you know i sort of had it for a few years but never really did much with it just was just sort of occasionally like you know just pressing pads and never really knew what i was doing yeah. and then it was only when i got a computer and then sort of you know cubase and then moved on to ableton it sort of got a bit more you know and it, yeah like i say it did take me a while to get to the point i remember like the first time you know i got a computer and cubase i remember thinking like the bars were seconds and I was writing like tunes that were like 10 minutes long. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'd, I'd, I'd take it around to a friend's house and go, what do you think of this tune? And they'd be like, it's a bit long, isn't it? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It was, so yeah, it, it did proper, come naturally you were a proper to proper sort of trial and error then for you. It was like genuinely kind of experimenting. And, yeah. You know. Exactly. Yeah, just yeah. sort of learning, you know, on the job, you know, like just sort of, you know, my free time, just turning it on. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and just seeing what I'd come up with, and then yeah, getting Ableton was a big changer. You know, I sort of worked so much mm. better in Ableton. Mm. Yeah, sort yeah. Of got a mix between you know like sort of hardware and you know VSTs and Ableton. I sort of quite right. like that.
and then this is not a dream so that's the, that's the latest release i don't know maybe it's not a new a, a recent track is it i don't know how long you sit on stuff for. yeah that, that was quite a recent one yeah and that was another one that come up quite quickly as well yeah it came together mm. quite quickly yeah and um, yeah. yeah i met um raymond and Lindsay. yeah just at houghton festival oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. initially yeah and then i left just both really sound and just got chatting to them you know and um yeah just just they were just like just send us some tracks yeah so yeah, I sent them a few and yeah, they picked that one for the comp. Yeah, it's this nice little comp, you know, they've sort of curated a nice little uh, really good group really of good. techno electro. Yeah, and I played, I'm trying to think, did I play? I played your track on the last episode, Bass Gender. Oh yeah, I saw that, yeah, thank you. Uh, um, that's right, mate. Um, but yeah, all, I think all the tracks on that are good. I can't, I'm trying to remember there's one on there that's got a really bizarre title, and I forgot what it is now. Something to do with Botox or something. Yeah, that's right, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, was it was it sod ninety or something. It's like yeah, the artist, yeah. I think. They, they followed me on um, they followed me on SoundCloud because I played their track on another thing, um, and they followed me in that, and I was just like, kudos on the track name, man. <laughs> yeah. <With some> respect. <laughs> it's so it's fucking it's... hard to come up with track names, man. I mean, I couldn't even think of an artist name for myself, you know. So, but <laughs> I'm thinking of a track name. Yeah, that you know doesn't come easy either. There's only one though, mate, to be fair, so. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Steve Allman. Yeah, that's all right. Nothing wrong with that. He's worked for Dave Clark all these years. So. Yeah, I mean, then that's always nice, you know, like, he's, he's given really good support to the tracks as well. Mm, I saw that, so yeah. It's always, always nice that he's, you know, that, like I say, growing up with Electro Boogie being such a big yeah. set of comps, you know, when Dave yeah. Clark plays one of your tracks, you are like, oh, wow, yeah, yeah. I made it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
So Master of the Future, I love that as well, because it's quite different for you. I mean, it's got, you know, because it's a bit of a 4-4. Four, four. It's almost got, yeah. I, don't know if it, I don't know if you could say, it's like it got a ghetto tech feel to it in a way, the, the type of, the rhythm to it. I don't know if that's unfair of me to say that, but that's what, yeah. that's what it reminds me of. Yeah, no, it's, it, I mean, that one, because like, it's like I was saying, it sort of normally takes me ages to write a track, but that one come really quickly. Like, that was, I, was, I shot myself with that one. It was like written in the night, pretty much. <laughs> I was like, wow, where did that come from? But yeah, no, it's quite simple, you know, it's just, it's very simple, you know, and it was just, uh, yeah, I just quite yeah. like that. Yeah, I think it's got a nice sort of, uh, yeah, it just sort of moves quite nicely. und ihr hört Base Agenda Radio. was the contender for the favourite out of that and Brave yeah. to be <laughs> What about that one, man? Anything particular about that one? Uh, yeah, I mean, that one was, um, yeah, because that was quite a recent one, wasn't it, that came out on um, Cultivate. It's nice to be on the split with Alex, Alex mm. Jan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and I was sort of 
obviously I'm always playing tracks to Phil you know like obviously when, when your, your brother-in-law basically runs Cultivate Electronics he's a good person to go to and say what do you think of this one Phil what do you think of that one Phil yeah. <laughs> yeah. well he knows his shit doesn't he because he's, 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 he also does a lot of mastering stuff doesn't he or does his own does he yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he, yeah. he works, you know, like a sound designer and stuff. Yeah, so yeah, yeah he, you know, that's so he's it. got a good ear. Yeah, he's got a yeah, good ear. And so yeah, yeah, I'm what. And that's the thing, you know. Part of making music, it was always like, you know, Phil was always a, a reference. I'm like, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? What do you think of that? And just, it was nice mm. to have him be like, you know, you, I, I think you should do this. I think you should do that. And yeah, you know, yeah. So he is, he is constructive with you, like he's not he's not like oh it's probably also I'll be nice sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, exactly. You know, if it's shit, I, I mean, my, my sister was always the classic as well. She was always a good reference. I'd, I'd like play a track to my sister, and she'd be like, um, if I heard this one in the club, I'd go to the, go and buy a drink. <laughs> I'll go <laughs> go to the toilet. And you'd be like, oh what? <laughs> You know, like that, that's a, you know, like a, a floor killer. You know, and you're like, like, yeah, that's dance. exactly what I was planning. You know, that's yeah, what that's, that's what I want. That's, that's my style. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, but yeah, it's, it's good to sort of have them. You know, you need input. that. You need gotta have some honest feedback, though, don't you? Really? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, bring you back down to earth. When you, you know, because you can get lost in tracks. You know, when yeah. you sort of listen to them again and again and again. Yeah. And you yeah. think, oh, I really like this one. You need some. You need another pair of ears to listen to yeah. it. Yeah. Well, you're lucky, man, to have those ears. That's great. But that yeah, initiate experiment was one yeah. Run past Phil. I just sort of gave him a few tracks in there. He picked that one mm. for um for that EP. Yeah. it was just you know like it just sounded so different you know and it just sounded hard you know and just that that sort of electro yeah. beat it was just so prominent like boom 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 you know still yeah. like you know resonates with me now yeah 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 Brilliant. i remember watching um like a documentary it was on uh, it was things like panorama or something like that and it was like a site it was like a science one and then it actually had the sample 
<laughs> oh, really? I was like, whoa, yeah, and I've, I've, I've not found it since. You the, know. The, the, the talking? Yeah. Oh, the vocal, the, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the little oh. snippet from the beginning. I've always wondered We're likely to from. see interest groups, you know, that one. And I was like, yeah. whoa. But yeah, that, and that, that, that was big. I mean, I'm having a mind blank, but the album, was it was it natural? What was the elements? Elements of life. Elements of life. Yeah. Big sister was a big um, Advent fan. She used to go mm. to the, you know, to their parties and stuff. And yeah, and so she, she's the one that got me into them. Wicked. And he's still brilliant today, isn't he? Yeah. You heard his? Is it his son as well? His son. Yeah, is it Zane? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. His stuff's. I mean, unsurprisingly, I guess he's had a good teacher, but his stuff's pretty. Phenomenal. Yeah, no, it's great. I mean, I mean, that was one of the highlights. You know, doing scanned was mm. getting getting the mm. Advent. Yeah that, yeah, that was like you know for me that was like you know we've you know been a fan one of the first sort of electro acts to get into and yeah, then to yeah. have him play live electro set that was yeah. just like it was with yeah, the wicked. exotics as well Oof. so it was like the youth of the first uk performance of the exotics and the advent live so i think that was the best scan we like to see people forming interest groups common interest groups to challenge their institutions to challenge their own society to challenge their government this is the message I sent out. to challenge their own society and to challenge their government. This is the message I sent out. So with the DJ, because I'm just trying to think where, where, so when did Scanned start? I'm trying to think. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I wasn't really, you know, I used to do parties with friends. It wasn't anything sort of, never yeah. had anything solid. It was like, you know, playing in bars and do like the odd sort of yeah. club night. We used to do a night down this place in, it was like an old toilet in Brick Lane. <laughs> 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 used to like, you know, it was like an old Victorian toilet, you know, and it was like really, it, we weren't sort of specialising in one sort of music. It was just friends, you know, right. putting on a night, you know, but then I guess, um, <laughs> doing it properly was through Phil, you know, like through, and it, you know, yeah. I guess it's the classic, right. like, it's, it's not what you know, like, it's, it's who you know. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. It, it yeah. helped yeah. having, like, Phil, I mean, cause Phil, uh, Scanned was Phil's baby, he'd been running yeah. it since he was, like, 20, I think. Mm. And then um, I sort yeah. of came on board, you know, through knowing, you know, through being family, I guess, like, and then uh, there was, oh, yeah, yeah. at the time, it was like, a, the resident was Lawrence, like, Agent 2, do you remember? Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and then, then I come on board as a resident as well. And it was, you know, it was quite nice doing the night, you know, an electro night when the electro wasn't much of a thing, you know, like yeah, it was yeah. sort of, uh, yeah. it was nice to wave the flag. But then, yeah. you know, at the same time, it would just end up with a few guys kicking some uh, tumbleweed around <laughs> an empty dance floor. <laughs> Phil was doing it like 10 years before, you know, I, I got involved just being yeah. a resident DJ. And then we did it another 10. Yeah. when I was yeah, around so it's like mm. I think it would have been 20 it was would have been the 20 years and then Covid happened because we had a load more parties ah. planned right. um, at Corsica and we you know we had some oh, yeah. good nights in the pipeline you know we, we had Stingray finally booked which was like one we'd wanted for ages nice. and then uh, Covid happened and it was like and then that, that was the big thing you know like it went yeah. from um, you know you sort of realised actually I don't miss the stress of putting on a night like you know like it's like promoting yeah. it and putting all the money into it it, well, it went from it. being like a party you know that was like quite a small party and you'd pay people to play but they would like sleep on your floor and it wasn't yeah. you know you weren't dealing with agents and it was just a completely different yeah, sort yeah. of you know event and then when the electro sort of wave happened again and people started getting into it again then suddenly you're dealing with agents and you're dealing with riders and you know yeah, it's, it, hotels it goes up to it's, pro it's professional you know they're, they're, they're yeah. trying to make money out of it you know like the which artists. is fair enough exactly um, yeah you know you can't blame that but it, it sort of changes the but then the, you know you have to spend more money on the party and yeah. then you know there's more pressure involved yeah and, you know exactly it's, it's and you need the, you've got the punters have got to support it otherwise it Exactly, yeah. Doesn't, doesn't work out. It was like a labour of love, you know, putting mm. a night like that on because you don't walk away from it with any money. No, of course. <laughs> you know? No, no. Yeah. No, you just hope you know, to you're break lucky even. to break yeah. even. Yeah, I'm no, very lucky to break even. This is the message I sent out.
This is Anthony Rotter and you listen to Base Agenda. And Professor X, anything? I mean, that's one of my favourites as well. Anything in particular made you choose that one? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it, I loved hip hop and that as well. And that, mm. that was a big influence. And then WA and just like, um, I remember hearing that one. I think it was like a, um, I think first time I heard it was on a DJ Digital. Like my mate had a tape and I think it was like Direct Beat Assassins or something they were called. And it was like oh, pretty yeah. um, furious mixing, you know, like it was like, you know, they'd yeah. play like, you know, 30 seconds of a track and then into the next and you know and it was just like it didn't even play the full track but i was just like what is that what is that yeah. I, you know I just loved it you don't yeah. there's not enough raps in electro anymore yeah. i keep saying to phil like you know since 24 i was like yeah come on let's, let's uh, make some tracks and get someone to rap on it yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know i could get some get some uh dr- some drill artists on there electro drill do you know what it'd be why not have a go <laughs> that, that could be quite interesting really yeah yeah no, we'll, we'll keep that one to ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we don't, you know, this could blow up, mate. We want to be... Exactly. That's it. We're saying there's not been any new uh, music lately, so maybe this could be the chance, you know? Electro drill. Electro. Yeah, well, there you go. Fucking hell, mate. Better write this down. Professor X, I am 
Because I, I really love all the old school stuff as well, mm. you know, like Egyptian Lover and I yeah. say the nerd in me when I got into Electro was just like, I want to go back and find out where did this come from? Where did that come from? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I remember it blew my mind, you know, here in Panic Zone. I was like, what, NWA oh. did Electro? And then, you know, you sort of dig deeper and yeah. find out about Arabian Prince and listen to that stuff. And yeah, yeah it was a real eye opener. That whole West yeah. Coast scene, you know, Ice T. Oh, so much, so much out there. Have you, I don't know if you've heard, have you heard the, the sister podcast that we started this year? Yeah, Space yeah, Man. I love that. Yeah, because you got, um, is it um, Lonzo? In, yeah, we just did that. It's just gone up on SoundCloud today. Yeah. I normally listen to that on my Saturday morning jog because it's like two hours and that's my like uh, jog. Oh, jog nice. Because really, that is the ultimate, um, like I say, because I love the nerdy, like going back yeah. in time and sort of find out where did this come from? Where did that come from? So yeah, so you were getting into it. So it was like that kind of '90s era. Where did Drexia fit into that? Can you can you remember? I don't, it's hard. It's probably hard to remember what came first, I suppose. Yeah, again, it was like you know my big sister. You know, she was just into all of that music, like all the Detroit stuff, especially. And uh, yeah, she's the one that introduced me to them. And and Doppler Effect and all the, you know, the offshoots and stuff with Gerald Donald and Stinson. And yeah, 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 just really grabbed me. I mean, I could have picked, there's so many Drexia tunes oh, I yeah. could have picked. I mean, you know, yeah. love them to bits. Yeah. And I, I remember getting that, yeah, that EP, you know, it used to be, um, is it Sister Ray? And, uh, you know, they'd always have a good, 
you know, Detroit section and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah Getting yeah, that yeah. and taking that home and being like, whoa, like Rubik's Cube on the flip and stuff as well. Like just, yeah. But yeah, I mean, all the, you know, and that, I think that was like my favourite time of being a, you know, a record buyer was, you mm-hmm. know, when with Drexia and the, the Seven Storms. Yeah. And, you know, just that sort of word of mouth, like, oh, have you heard this, you know, this artist, like, I think it's Drexia, and, you know, you'd find it in the racks, like the promo, and it would yeah. say, like, you know, rumoured to be Drexians and stuff. And yeah, like, that's you it. Know, take it, it home. Because it was like, always wow. a bit, it was a bit kind of a bit enigmatic around then, wasn't it? You're never, never quite sure who was behind each track and stuff. Like that. Exactly, yeah. I found that really exciting, you know. I don't yeah. think I've got as excited about any other racks since, you know. I don't think anybody's really done that since, have they, in the same way? Most people are, like, in the fucking camera all the time. <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, pounding or, you know, dancing around in their vests, showing off their guns. And, uh, you know, it's, it's I, I, you know, I think my favourite acts were, like, you know, Underground Resistance, Drexia. Yeah. You never saw their faces. <laughs> just music in the front, isn't it? That's the point, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah.
This is Ben Pest, you're listening to Face Agenda. Radioactive Man and Ben Pest thing is just hilarious. I love it. Yeah. That's I mean, the, that the title, title alone, it, you know, a gentleman from London was very upset. <laughs> and that, yeah. that, that sample, I don't know who she is, but she's, uh, it's, it's just, yeah. Why do you like it, man? Anyway, you choose. Yeah, I mean, the same. Yeah, I think it's just got that, you know, it's got, it's got real funk to it, isn't it? And there's the yeah. you know, playfulness with the sample. Yeah. So, so great, cheeky. Great so, track. So cheeky. Yeah. I think, I think Ben's been putting out really good records lately and oh, yeah. yeah you know and, and, yeah and radioactive man obviously you know i'd love to t- i'd love to know the story behind that is, is, isn't it from because I, 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 i'm I, it, I was really racking my brains a bit as well trying to work out where the sample's from i mean i think it's some comedy show isn't it like it's something is is it like day to day or something or i might you know i might be wrong uh, I, think, I think that that wouldn't surprise me now you've said that because it does sound does sound like a piss like a spoof almost yeah of, yeah uh, pretty... of, you know not in not in my backyard middle class kind of thing exactly yeah i'm, I'm pretty sure I'm, i might be wrong yeah we'll have to um hit them up and find out and it's like the way they've made their voice even more wobbly it, it, it's just <laughs> something about it yeah i do like that about keith's stuff in particular he does he knows how to have fun with it doesn't he yeah oh, definitely yeah and you know funk i think is um always right up there on the agenda mm-hmm. with him yeah yeah
then DMX crew, man. That e- I like that EP. Yeah, I really like that EP. Yeah, I, I guess that was just what was, um, I, you know, I, I liked the whole EP. And I guess that was the one at the point, um, you know, we decided, I was like, yeah, I'll go with that one. I, I quite like, you know, it's, it, that is the sort of, yeah, sort of like, it's got, it's got that sort of crunchy, mm. sort of quite fast electro sort of style I like, you know. Yeah. And the sound quality, he's just so spot on with his production, isn't he? Oh, definitely. Yeah, he's a, you know he's a real talent. Like he knows he's, he knows his onions. But I say I've, I've been really out of the loop with um, new music. So but they're just like people that you know pops up on my on my Spotify, and you're like, all oh, right, I'll give that a listen. Yeah, so yeah. They, that's that's one thing I'm looking forward to. You know, yeah. When I'm in my new gaff, is actually just yeah, just having it all back and buying records again. You know, yeah, no, getting involved nice. in that respect. Yeah, no, that would be nice, man. Not being yeah. so out of touch. Hopefully, should have another one coming out on Cultivated. I, I sort of sent Phil the tracks ages ago, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I'll take these four. But then, okay, I, I, I need to nudge him with that one. But um, so that would be an EP, your, your own name EP, then presumably. Yeah, like, but nothing com- confirmed yet. But you know, it was at the time it was. I need to nudge him and say, like, come on, Phil, what's going on with this one? Yeah, pressing but, um, times are fucking crazy at the moment as well, still, aren't they? They're that's really- it, and, and obviously that cultivated. You know, the can sort of yeah, great roster of artists sort of queuing up to be on there as well. You know, yeah. so because he's got that sub label now, hasn't he? Um, did you call cultivated electronics limited or something? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so it was like the limited pressing, like just vinyl only. Yeah. Yeah. So I, no- I noticed that. So that's been looks like that's been pretty busy. But yeah. So yeah. hopefully that. But then yeah, otherwise you know it's just um I've, I've got I've got 
quite a few tracks I need to polish up and you know send off I guess to people I need to get off my butt and do that yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 of course yeah all right well so you have got you know you're not like you're dry you've got material you just need to yeah yeah I've probably got about six tracks or something six or seven tracks that could probably send over cool. to anyone that's interested <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah nice one, man. Yeah. Like, I need to put myself out. That's the thing. I've never really been that sort of guy. That the sort of you know promo. Hey. You know? Yeah, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, is it? I mean, you know, I can understand why as well, really. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, especially DJing and stuff. Now you think that is, you know, it is a game now, isn't it? That's that's you know, it can't be good. You know, for these young DJs coming through, like they, that, it must be sort of a different set of pressure in that respect to feel like you constantly got to be have that presence and well this is know. why you see so many i mean there was, was there was a you know that uh thing in berlin whore it's called it's like a bathroom people djing in a bathroom oh yeah yeah it looks yeah. like looks like a bathroom, a bit like yeah. the toilet you were used to playing that's it yeah <laughs> I, mean, I know it well <laughs> and there was one on there the other day and and i don't know if it was a she or a he to be honest but they had they were dressed up like a unicorn so they like a unicorn like a pantomime horse unicorns yeah I, I just, and all this fucking glittery shit and all that. and i'm like this is what people this is what people that DJ's to do a to get... head. i've, I've yeah. seen like yeah it's just where the they might have done the boiler room actually it might have been the boiler room i might be getting them mixed up i think it might yeah. be I was, just mean, wishing, I was just like, what the fuck? This what is, is happening? <laughs> people have so got, this is, they're so desperate now. These are the things that they're doing. We need an edge, you know, that's it. I need an edge. Like, you know, I've got to have to wear a horse helmet. Yeah, and it's all us like, <laughs> in our black t-shirts and caps, you know, not, nobody fucking knows we're here. Exactly. <laughs> Man, I, that's it. I, I need to think of something new. I'll have a think, I'll drop you a line. I'll get some ideas together. Yeah, let's, let's get thinking, you know, I need, I need some what's sort your of... Favorite, uh, what's your favourite Muppet? What's your favourite muppet? <laughs> yeah, animal. I just come on as animal. There you go. DJ Animal. That's I mean that's a good name as well. Steve Animal Allman. <laughs> Boiler yeah. room. Boiler room. Twenty twenty four. This time next year. <laughs> <laughs> Over to you, Andy. Hey mate, anything I can do to help? Just shut. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff from Steve Orman. Had a real nice chat, a bit of a laugh there, and we covered a lot of his material. Keep your eyes out for new stuff from him too. Make sure to give him a follow on all the socials. Coming up next, we've got DJ Sky with a mix of material all from his Borg Recordings label. Most recently uh, released a UK Electro CD, another one in the pipeline, really focusing in on the talent that we've got over here in the UK. Brilliant mix coming up. Make sure to support him. Check out what's going on on the label by heading to skyborg.bandcamp.com. Before that, though, this month's Bass Agenda recording flashback. Thought I'd choose one from the Touched Bass compilation that was a collaboration between Bass Agenda recordings and Touched Music. One of my absolute favourites from that track by Chevron called Let's Go Fucking Crazy.
Engaging Guest Mix Mode Guest Mix Mode Engaged
This is Detroit's Filthiest, and you're listening to the number one underground bass agenda.
sin, sin. They're all sinners. They're all doomed to perdition. Sin, sin, sin. They're all sinners. They're all doomed to perdition. You will be doomed. 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 You will destroy yourself with your own hands.
Clark and you're listening to Base Agenda.
great mix from Skyborg. Be sure, as I said earlier, to check out skyborg.bandcamp.com. Have a listen through the Borg Recordings back catalogue. Keep your eyes peeled for new stuff coming up very, very soon as well. Love and thanks out again to Steve Allman for taking part in the show. Huge love and thanks out to the people supporting Base Agenda on patreon.com slash baseagenda. You guys are really helping keep this thing going. And of course, one of the rewards for doing so is that you'll get the show straight away tomorrow morning. Plus a voice-free mixed version of part one of the show. Full track list, etc. as well. I'll be back next month. In the meantime, take care. Have a great weekend. Cheers. Possessed by Volker. Possessed by Volker.